Hello, this is Edward Lambert with another video about the six element model for acupuncture. This video is going to be about distinguishing six and five elements. This is a part one, there'll be a part two, and it comes from my chapter 12 of my ebook, Creating Life. Now, keep in mind, I'm not replacing the five element theory. I'm, I am distinguishing six elements from five elements. They both exist, but it's key to understand the difference between six element theory and five element theory. That's what these next two videos are going to show. All right, let's get started. Distinguishing six and five elements. It is said that understanding the difference between five and six in acupuncture is advanced. To distinguish between five and six elements, we must distinguish elements in the environment from elements within a living being. The idea of elements at Tsing describes interactions and relationships between phenomena in the world environment. The idea of elements as food describes the functions of the internal meridian organs of the body and the interactions that occur between them. Now, in traditional Chinese medicine, there are five elements, Wu Tsing, and six internal meridian organs, Liu Fu. We now differentiate between five elements in the world and six elements within a living being. When we see the six elements as internal meridian organs, Fu. The original sixth element grain was not originally an element, Tsing, to describe interactions in the world, but rather an internal meridian organ, Fu to describe interactions within a living body. Thus, we must understand the six elements as six internal meridian organs, Fu, interacting within the body. Let's go into a theory class at a school of acupuncture and listen to a lesson about the six elements. There's always a student who asks, why are there four meridians in the fire element? Is there a way to separate out two of them? What if, now what if the teacher was to say this? Well, you know, there is another theoretical model that puts Sanjiao and pericardium in a sixth element called seed. It is a six element theory. Over 2,500 years ago, the elements were called seats of government, Fu. The same Fu as the six Fu you know, the Zheng Fu. They were wood, fire, earth, metal, water, and grain. Grain was included with the other five elements. This idea was found in a very old text predating 500 BC. The text was the Zuo Zhuan, written during the spring and autumn period of the Chinese history, 770 to 476 BC. The six element model describes nature in a different way than the five element model. Five element theory describes the free, unregulated interaction between elements. Confucius loved this raw, natural way of nature to put things in balance through the destructive co cycle. He appreciated the destructive extremes of nature to discipline elements. He saw this as the way to live life. When elements interact through mutual destruction, in the long run, they ultimately achieve balance. However, the short-term instabilities can be very damaging and unsettling. Six element theory describes another type of environment where the damage of these short-term instabilities has to be overcome. Six element theory speaks about the internal environment inside a living being. Destructive forces cannot play free inside a living being. Six element theory describes the regulated interaction between elements inside a living being. It's a model to describe the active regulation of homeostasis within a living being. The six elements refer to the internal meridian organs Fu in the body. The six element seed governs the endocrine system. Its meridian Sanjiao governs the hypothalamus specifically. The hypothalamus regulates not only homeostasis, but a wide range of physiology. It is only through the homeostatic actions of the sixth element that higher forms of life have been possible. That's a key idea there. It is only through the homeostatic actions of the sixth element that higher forms of life have been possible. That's how you've been able, it's through the sixth element that you've been able to take within the wild chaotic interactions of nature and produce life. 
Within this regulated internal environment, you eliminate most of the short-term instabilities seen in the five element model. Most notably, six element theory does not have a destructive cycle, but rather its cycles reflect dependency, cooperation, and stability through complement and reflection. A living being is very different from raw elements in nature because nature doesn't have a hypothalamus to regulate its balance. In nature, there are extreme instabilities like tornadoes, freezing temperatures, floods, big waves, and so on that just happen freely. This is the five element reality. However, within a living being, the physiology could not tolerate, could never tolerate such extremes between the organs. Death would result before balance is restored. Life would never have been able to get a foothold into this earth if it wasn't for internally regulating physiology. Most diseases stem from problems with homeostasis. So actively regulating homeostasis with an endocrine system is absolutely necessary to life. A person can go into a silent meditation for weeks and experience no inner physiological storms, only an effortless calm. It is because the hypothalamus actively regulates a stable homeostasis within. This is the element seed at work inside a living body. Now keep in mind, this is the hypothalamus is actively regulating balance. You look out in nature, there's nothing regulating the balance. It is just wide open and free. But if you look inside the body, there's a system that is actively regulating the balance. Big difference. So, although six element theory represents a higher level of organizing elements, we don't see this level in nature, but only inside living beings. It is for that reason that we need both five and six element theories to fully understand nature, ourselves, and our relationship to nature. Okay, class. To review, five and six element theories contrast two ways of nature. Five elements describe the unregulated external interactions of independent elements in the environment. Six elements describe the regulated internal interactions of dependent elements within a living being. So there you have it. That is how six element theory is taught. You don't replace five elements. You begin to see the difference between the two of them. Five elements explains one set of interactions in the world. And the sixth element explains the other interactions that happen inside a living being that creates life. There'll be more in part two.